Shelby and welcome to my garden. I'm gonna do a little garden tour video or actually like a big garden tour video for you guys today. I am just loving the feeling of being out here right now. It is so calming. I love being out here super early in the morning before everybody's kind of gotten up, before you start to hear the noise pollution of the world and just focus on the nature and the wildlife around you that's just also enjoying your garden. We're going to start from the front, move to the back. What we've got here is our first raised bed that we ever built for this whole entire garden. What we have in here is the um, onion chives somewhere back there. And I actually got those chives from the grocery store and just shoved them right into the soil. And then now they're growing. They're super healthy. I literally did nothing else but just like picked them out of the bag and shoved them in the soil. You can do that with so many things from the grocery store, which is awesome. What I have right here is our Thai basil, which smells so good. It adds so much flavor to those types of uh, recipes. If you're cooking with Thai food and things like that, it's a really delightful flavor. And on the side is our pineapple tomato plant. A few of you guys had commented and said, you must grow the pineapple tomatoes. You must grow more of them. So I ended up growing planting about eight plants of them and they're looking really happy. I can't wait to see what they look like once they have started to mature and everything because the actual fruits are really big. So let's go from one side of the pineapple tomato plant to the other side of our cattle panel. That's what I have on both sides of the um, this cattle panel. As you can see, they're starting to canopy over, which is awesome. This side of the pineapple tomatoes is doing a lot better than the other side just because it has more access to water I would say like it's closer to the sprinkler but they're both doing really well and I'll show you how sizable the fruits are on this side versus that side like that is about the size of my hand it's huge as far as a beefsteak variety this has been really great I haven't tasted them yet but I'm definitely as like a reviewer I would give it like a five-star review for gardening so far it's my little swish chard forest my colorful forest I planted five color swish chard seeds in here they did really really well we've been just cooking with the swish chard so frequently basically anytime there's like a recipe where I can just like throw some type of uh, greens that would act as spinach in it I just I do that I just come out here really quick uh, chop them off and saute them in there. So I have my long white zucchini right here. They're a really good flavor, very similar to just like a traditional zucchini. Right now these plants are kind of going past their prime I would say when it comes to the humidity and like different funguses that start to attack them and different bugs. It is totally possible to keep these plants healthy. You just have to really hold their hand and make sure that they're you know not going to be attacked to death by any of those types of things I just mentioned and I just don't have the time to do that so for most of our zucchini and squash plants and things like that they're kind of running their course I started them in February and now we are you know super close to June so I feel really positive about the amount of harvest that we've gotten from everything our next stop is my celery patch, which is the first time I've ever grown celery successfully. I grew it from seed, which is so awesome to me. The seeds are like micro teensy tiny little seeds, smaller than carrot seeds basically. Uh, what I ended up doing is just like dumping a whole bunch of them in uh, like a, a container and uh, waiting about like three weeks or so, I don't even remember. It was a long time for them to sprout and just letting them grow in there for a while, taking them out individually and planting them in here. So that definitely worked. We've got lots of celery. I've got the pink Chinese celery and I've got the Utah celery. And my favorite part about growing this is if you walk over here and just kind of like put your hand over the patch, uh, it's just like wafts celery and it smells like a soup or something's being made. Got my beet bed 
right here and uh, um, some onions right there. You just saw my chicken helping herself to a little snack here, which is fine because I'm growing the beets for the roots, although I know you can eat the beet leaves. If she wants to eat the leaves, you know, go for it. My um, muncher cucumbers, which I thought were like totally a goner done for, but it turns out they have like a second wind in them. And I'm seeing a lot of muncher cucumbers ready to go. The thing about muncher cucumbers is that you wanna pick them when they're young. Otherwise they kind of start to turn into like a, a standard cucumber that you're used to. So they're super crunchy and they're ideal for snacking. So this is my level of flower gardening. I'm not like a flower gardener. Traditionally, I'm like a vegetable gardener. But you need something beautiful in your garden. You need something for the pollinators and something that just like warms your heart and you're like, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful out here. I want to come out here and check on my vegetables because those flowers look so pretty. So what I did is I just dumped like a whole seed packet of wildflower mix in here. I don't even know what type of flowers um, these blue ones are but they are growing really really successfully and the bees are just going nuts on them they love them and I have a, a whole bunch of poppy flowers in here which are just so stunning I'm obsessed with poppy flowers our zone it's kind of hard to grow flowers like a poppy flower for example because it's typically like better for colder climates so what i do is i just dump a whole bunch of seeds and hope that at least one plant germinates and that's what happened i have just a, at least three plants that have germinated and that's really all you need so i'm super proud of my flower bed this year we've got our spoon tomato plant the reason why i want to stop here and focus on this plant is because if you're growing spoon tomatoes I want to say I highly recommend growing them in a pot. I grew them in one of my beds last year and for one, it was kind of hard to get to them because they, when they start producing, there's like thousands of teeny, teeny tiny little tomatoes in this. And uh, I haven't had a chance to actually trellis this plant because I have a newborn baby and I'm just doing my best over here. It's hard to get out here right now. But anyways, these are teensy tiny little spoon tomatoes. Perfect for, you know, cooking, throwing them in there, like a pasta, whatever. Uh, but you don't want a bunch of these little tiny tomatoes to fall in your bed and then reseed themselves because then you're gonna have like seriously a thousand spoon tomato plants so I would definitely recommend growing them in a pot that way you can get around them as well uh, like a full 360 access to all the little tiny tomatoes Cherokee purple tomato plant I'm also planting this one in a pot they're really happy in this pot so if you're wondering you know oh what kind of tomato plants can I grow in a pot versus like a big bed or something you can grow all tomato plants in a pot it's totally fine whether they're like a beefsteak tomato a cherry tomato it doesn't matter they're gonna be happy in a big sizable pot um, such as this one behind me are my tomatillo plants which are just pumping out tomatillos like like crazy these things are so easy to grow they grow almost like a weed like literally no problem they're ready to harvest i've never made like salsa verde or anything like that before but i'm gonna do it so if anybody has any good recipe suggestions uh, definitely feel free to leave some suggestions in the comment section or like what to do with tomatillos other than making like salsa verde here next to my turnip bed holy cow Oh my gosh. This turnip is gigantic. Look at the actual like turnip part. They're getting a little too big right now. I just haven't had time to, you know, harvest all of them and eat on all of them because our squash plants are just like producing like crazy so that's really been what's been consuming like our meals i would say so i'm gonna have to start harvesting these because i don't want them to go to waste and if you're thinking about growing turnips just do it it's super super easy these are i'm like starting to forget what the name of all of these are but i think this is like a yellow or like an orange carrot variety that i have they're really tall so i'm gonna pull one let's see if it's ready like a little test it's been about 90 days oh yeah they're looking good 
I'll show you guys. These are ready to go. I'm gonna take them inside and start cooking up with them. So yeah, it, they're not like a dark orange variety. It's supposed to be like a yellow variety. And um, I've never grown this particular variety. I will figure out what it is and put it in here. But I'm super excited to have all of our carrots now. And there's, there's nothing like growing your own carrots and eating them. Seriously, one of the best things and most rewarding things to grow, especially when you cook with them, I really feel like that's one of those things that you can just taste the difference. Some things that you grow, it's like, it's not that noticeable when it's like organic or homegrown, but carrots, definitely you can taste the difference. I'm sitting back here next to my black bean bed. It's a little bit hard to tell what it is because it's so overgrown but I'm gonna pick one. I've never grown them before. They're looking like a little bit purple, like the actual pod. So I'm gonna open it up and see what they look like. And they're black, which is so cool. I've kind of damaged a few of these. I'm gonna open it up so you can see. But um, I know that sounds really silly, but if you've never grown, if you're growing something for the first time, you're always kind of amazed, like, wow, you know, it's a watermelon or t tomatoes are growing on this. So that's awesome and they're all about ready to harvest. I'm gonna dry them out and just, you know, use them for cooking at our house. I'm underneath one of my cattle panel trellises. So I have a, a one, two, three, four. I have four cattle panel trellises in that like arch style that everybody loves so much. So I've planted the cherry tomatoes on this one and also a Black Beauty variety on this one. The Black Beauties are really, really cool. I'll do some close-ups. But what I wanna say is if you're going to plant tomatoes on a cattle panel trellis, I would recommend planting an indeterminate variety because the height is going to be indeterminate. They're going to continue to grow and be a lot taller than like one of those determinate varieties. So definitely keep that in mind when you're picking out your tomato varieties for your cattle panel trellis arch. I see my first ripe black beauty tomato and it's red but there's like all of the other black beauty tomatoes are they're like really dark on top. This one has it's an got an issue. Now I know like they actually get a little bit red and they're, they don't just stay black. I wasn't sure what to look for because when they're not ripe they look like really really black so uh, my husband was like, oh, those are like ready to pick because they're really big and they're black. But um, I'm just going to wait till they get a little bit of red hue before picking them now. It's always interesting to me what decides to grow in the garden. I planted sunflower seeds in both of my flower beds. And for some reason, this bed decided to take to the sunflowers. And the other bed decided to take to like the poppies and those blue purple flowers I showed you guys earlier, which is really cool to have a variety. I've got two flower beds in the middle of the garden, uh, which just kind of like centers the garden and welcomes all those pollinators to come and enjoy themselves. So this is what I'm talking about when picking a variety of tomatoes for your cattle panel trellises. I didn't look to see like what was determinate or indeterminate or anything like that before planting things. I just like, I just did it this year. But now like this is the first time I've um, done a lot of tomatoes on my cattle panels. I'm just, it's like learning, you know, what I'm gonna do in the future. I don't know if these are determinate or indeterminate varieties, but they're definitely not trellising like the other ones. There's a lot of just like open space that's not covered yet. Got these strawberry uh, cherry tomatoes on this side. I don't know if you can see the lovely little line of tomatoes that are just dripping down. Uh, they get nice and kind of red looking with a black top. So they're really cool looking to grow. On the other side, we have the beautiful Brandywine tomatoes. They're just absolutely massive, like the size of my hand, which like if you're growing a beefsteak tomato, that is like the most exciting thing. You want a big tomato that's just gonna cover the whole entire circumference of a sandwich, and that's what the Brandywine tomatoes are gonna do. I don't have any ripe ones to show you, but once they start to ripen, they're gonna have like a really deep, wine, red wine color to them and lots of really good flavor. So you guys, my pepper bed, which is absolutely loaded. Probably my best pepper bed year yet. We've got our banana peppers, our black beauty peppers, 
but there's a common theme with like Black Beauty this year. I don't know what it is. I've got a lot of purple stuff. So our Black Beauty bell peppers and then also our um, Tabasco peppers. I've never grown those before. And um, these banana pepper plants are like just, they're like bragging almost. They're just going crazy. They're so awesome. Really good snacking peppers. And I would definitely recommend, you know, like eight, 10 hours of sun a day if you're doing like a pepper bed. Uh, but yeah, I'm super happy with the peppers this year. Here I have my China Jade cucumbers and they're just massive. These things, if you leave them alone, this is like over two feet long, it's crazy. Uh, but they're really tasty. I would definitely recommend growing these. They have a taste similar to like a muncher cucumber, even when they get a little bit overripe, I would say. Uh, they still kind of hold on to that really uh, desirable crunch. So I would recommend, I'm gonna grow these next year for sure. And um, they're standing up really well to the heat. Down here, I have my, uh, these are my grow beds. They're really awesome for like a balcony garden or squash or something like that. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on them just because the things in there are like past their prime. They're not looking too happy, but I would recommend those if you are uh, growing in a small space because they have a water basin at the bottom. And, um, we just had some squash in there. I was, you know, harvesting a lot of things from it, but like I said, the squash are just kind of like running their course, which is okay. I just need to take them out, plant something new. I'm probably gonna plant uh, some type of like herbs or something like that in there, or um, something more delicate. I don't know yet. So yeah, but that's my, those are my little grow boxes, my grow box garden. <laughs> Welcome to my snake bean forest. There are a lot of snake beans here and uh, this plant grows really, really quickly. It takes over, it will spread out. So make sure wherever you're planting these, you want it to kind of like take over. These would be ideal for a cattle panel trellis. I didn't do that this year, uh, but these are really impressive long beans. In the three beds behind me, there are tomatoes planted. One is a Floridade tomato, one's an old German variety, and one is a money maker variety of tomatoes. They are just going nuts right now. They're kind of sloppy looking, but you know, who doesn't love like a sloppy garden basically? So. We're about to go tomato crazy. I'm gonna show you my tomatoes at the front. There's over 50 plants, I believe, in my garden, and I have to start canning these things or they're gonna just go to waste. At the front of the garden, I have my cattle panel walls set up. So you can, you know, not only just make them trellises, like an arch form, but you can set them up as walls, which are really ideal for tomatoes or other really heavy type of um, crops that you might want to trellis. So I've got my San Marzano's all down this line. And then in the front line, I have like a variety of tomatoes. Here we have our butternut squash, which has sprawled all over the place. I've never grown this many butternut squash successfully. So I'm so looking forward to bringing these guys inside and being able to cook up so many different things with them. Right now I'm in my no dig, no till garden beds, which consist of cantaloupe, butternut squash, and a variety of different squash as well, as well as watermelon. So I would highly recommend doing it. The weeding is super minimal. Everything is really healthy. And over time, after a few seasons, we're going to have created a super healthy ecosystem that just really works and is um, having like this like black mulch compost which is awesome so I'm loving the no dig no till garden method I'm like a fully converted person now I'm walking around and I noticed that there's a cantaloupe that has been busted open and a critter or something ate half of it there's like seeds everywhere so if you know what type of like animal would have done this I don't like would a squirrel have done this we have like a lot of squirrels or possibly a rat, I hope not. So uh, we have a lot of other cantaloupes and watermelons out there, so I'm hoping they're not like, oh my gosh, this is, this is the spot to get our fruits. So I'm gonna show you. That's not good, not good at all. So if you wanna talk about like kitchen staples, such as 
onions, salt, pepper, things like that. Garlic is totally a kitchen staple for our house. We, I don't know if there's like hardly any recipes that we cook that don't include garlic in them. So I'm really excited to have planted about 150 heads of garlic. They're growing really, really well. It was my first true year growing garlic and to my surprise, it's crazy easy. The hardest part is just the time. It takes about like nine months or so for the garlic to uh, fully form. Next year, I'm going to grow double this amount and have a year's worth of garlic to preserve, which is really, really exciting. And I did these from the grocery store. So if you wanna see a video on how I did this, I'll link it up above. Uh, could not be easier. So for the front of the cattle panel trellis, we have just a variety of tomatoes. I honestly don't even remember all the varieties that I planted because I planted so many, I think like over 20 different uh, varieties. But these tomatoes are super happy here. We're like tomato crazy, like I said before, and ready to harvest. I've got a lot of harvesting to do later today. I like to come outside with my son and do the harvesting because he just loves it. Like a two-year-old absolutely loves harvesting bunches of tomatoes. Uh, this particular area, we've got crazy amounts of success with tomatoes. So I've got my work cut out for me. Well, that mostly covers the garden. Lots and lots to enjoy and to harvest. Thank you guys for hanging out with me.